Have you ever wondered why your buddies in your group can outdrive you? It could come down to the curve. Today I'm going to explain the differences between a drawer and a fade with the driver. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, master club fitter and golf professional at Second Swing. Today I'm going to explain the differences between a fade, the golf ball that flies to the right, or a drawer, the golf ball flies to the left. There is some substantial differences in distance when the ball fades versus when the ball draws. And I'm going to discuss the differences in the distance, but also the distance difference in spin and also the difference in dispersion, because we end of the day, we want to make sure that we do hit more fairways with our driver, but it's going to be important to pay attention to the distance that you hit with your driver. So I'm going to hit some intentional fades, intentional draws with my own driver to discuss the differences. Keep in mind, if you play a draw or play a fade with your own driver and you're looking to correct that, come on into second swing to get fit, also bring your trades in. That is a great way to help offset your price for new golf equipment. Come on in, get fit. We'd love to help you out. That should be pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to hitting a drawer. When I was hitting a fade, I had to open my body up. So I had to open my feet and open my shoulders up. When I'm gonna be hitting a drawer, I'm actually gonna be doing the opposite. So I've actually dropped my right foot back a little bit to generate a little more club path. It's gonna be a little more in to out. First off, I just want to talk about how effortless it seemed to me when I was trying to hit a draw to generate some speed. When I was hitting a fade, I felt like I was swinging out of my shoes, but I was only barely getting my club speed to about 110 miles an hour. When I was hitting a drawer, I felt like I had to taper it down to try and match the club speed there too. So I'm not saying that if you hit a drawer that you're going to get more club speed or a fade, you're going to get less club speed. But for me, it was just something that I was very, very comfortable with when I was hitting a drawer that I was able to generate a lot more speed. And I always felt like I was swinging about 80% to try and match the club speed. But let's kind of talk about the numbers. So you'll see that my club speed, pretty close, both around about 110 miles an hour, was just a little faster with the drawer. But as I mentioned, definitely trying to taper that down. Big difference there you can see is ball speed. So if we like take a look at the ball speed, you can see that I was getting about four miles an hour more ball speed with the drawer versus the fade. And that's a little to do with the launch and the spin. If we take a look at the launch angle, you'll see when I was hitting a drawer, I was launching at about 15 degrees. When I was hitting a fade, I was launching at almost 20 degrees because I was leaving that face a little bit more open to hit a fade. Face was a little bit more closed to the fade uh, to generate the ball to curve to the left there as well. We did have an outlier per shot. So I want to talk about those really quickly before we really talk about the numbers. So if we take a look on the right side, we can see with the fade, we had that one that was kind of a long way over there to the right, short right. And then if we look at the uh, yellow circle, we had one that was basically dead straight. Um, but they were definitely outliers. So we noticed the spin rate was very high on shot five, for example. That was 39.68. So if we take that one away, you will notice then the dispersion pattern gets a little closer. And if we take shot 11 out, we'll notice that one, the spin rate was about 28.34. But the difference was, even with the miss it, when I was hitting a fade, the ball spun about 1,000 RPMs more. For those two miss hits, those were, and when I hit a drawer, the spin rate was about 1,000 RPMs less. So it was a huge, huge difference. So, so now if we take out the miss hits, we can definitely see some general trends. So if we take a look at the averages here, you'll notice that the spin rate, first off, was less when I was hitting a drawer. 
versus when I was in the fade. That is something you would absolutely expect. If we take a look at carry distance, you'll notice the bull was carrying 293 yards with a draw, 283 yards with a fade. So the bull carried 10 yards further when I was hitting a draw. But I want to take a look at the height because I feel like the fade was for sure flying higher, but it was still flying shorter. And that's a little bit to do with that spin rate there too. So you'll notice the height, big, big difference. 170 feet in the air when I was in the fade. 129 feet in the air when I was hitting a draw. So massive difference in flight difference. So naturally the ball is going to roll out a lot further when hitting a draw, and it's gonna roll out a little bit less when hitting a fade. So if we were gonna switch this, this dispersion screen on the right side here to, to uh, carry distance, you will notice a little bit closer. But when we have it on total distance, you can see that there's a little bit more separation so I picked up basically 20 yards when I was hitting a draw versus when I was hitting a fade. So that's, that's a huge, huge difference when discussing distance because we all know we want to hit the, our drives nice and far. So when hitting a fade, I definitely need to get my club path to be a little bit out to in. Out to in is going to be a little bit across my body, so that's going to give negative numbers on TrackMan. Negative means the left. So we'll notice my club path when I was trying to hit a fade was six degrees to the left. When I was hitting a drawer, my club path was actually three degrees to the right, so three degrees in to out. That's gonna help generate a little bit more curve to the left. So you'll notice that I did generate a lot of curve to the left. When I was hitting a drawer, there was about 100 feet of curve to the left. When I was hitting the fade, it was about half that. There was only about 43 feet of curve to the right. So with the ball only curving 43 feet to the right, it's gonna be easier to control. So you'll notice if we take a look on the screen here, you can see how that white circle is kinda in the middle. It gets a little bit right of center. We'll notice when I was hitting a drawer, it was pretty far left. So yes, there's bonuses to hitting the ball far with a drawer, but you can definitely overcook it. And we did see that also with the iron test as well. If you hit a drawer, it can turn into a hook. If you hit a fade, it for sure can turn into a slice as well, but it may be a little easier to control. So generally speaking, tour professionals, they like to, when they're trying to hit the fairway, they'll try and hit a tiny little fade. If they're trying to hit it far, they'll try and hit a draw. So there's kind of a big differences between the two of them there. A draw is for sure going to go a lot further. If you don't have a hard time hitting the fairway, by all means, go ahead, try and hit that draw. But if you have a hard time controlling that hook, maybe tapering it back a little bit and hitting a little bit less of a hook, a little bit straighter golf shot might be a little bit easier for you there as well. So speaking on draw versus fade, golf technology. Golf technology can especially help you out. There's different ways. First off, talking about lie angle. So if you had a club that's a little bit more upright, it's gonna be a little easier to get that club face a little bit square coming through to get the ball to start a little bit to the left that club face is a little bit flatter, it's going to peel off to the right a little bit as well. There's also draw biases in club heads as well. So with drivers, if you have the weight more distributed in the heel of the driver, it's going to generally draw a little bit more as opposed to having that weight kind of more in the back or more in the front of the driver there too. And also golf shaft, depending on the player, a lighter golf shaft or a heavier golf shaft may help curve the ball in different, di different directions as well. So make sure to come on into Second Swing to work with a fitter or say work with a fitter online. We would love to help you correct your ball flight to whether you want to hit a little more of a draw or a little bit of a fade or just to straighten it out. Bring your gamer in, we do accept trades. So keep in mind, trades is a great way to help offset the price on new golf equipment. Come on into Second Swing and get fit like a pro.